Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Status, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our playlist called Signs in Medicine. In previous videos, we talked about Murphy's sign, Koenig's sign, Brudzinski sign, Chvostik sign, Trousseau sign, Laser Trilla sign, etc, etc. Today, it's time to talk about the friction rub. You can hear it in cardiac diseases, lung diseases, and even abdominal diseases. Let's get started. There is an entire playlist called Signs in Medicine on my YouTube channel. Quote, to illustrate the utility of the aggravating and alleviating factors, consider two patients with left-sided anterior chest pain. One patient's pain is induced by exercise and strong emotions, but consistently relieved by rest and sublingual nitroglycerin. This is characteristic of angina pectoris. The other patient's pain is aggravated by sneezing, coughing, and respiration, but alleviated by shallow breathing and splinting of the left side of the chest. This patient has pleurisy. That's how you become a good doctor, not a doofus with a stethoscope. What is pleurisy? Pleurisy is inflammation of the pleura. No kidding. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Don't forget that the pleura is part of the serous membrane or the serous cavities of the body. The three Ps. Pleura, percardium, and peritoneum. What kind of fluid do they have? A very thin film of fluid known as transcellular fluid. It's a serous fluid. Not mucinous. Remember. Mucinous fluids have tons of mucin, which is protein. The mucin is thick, but serous fluid are very thin, just like the fluid in your pleural cavity. The fluid in the pleura or pericardium or peritoneum belongs to the extracellular fluid, which is one third of your total body water, which is 60% of your total body weight. Please recall that the pleura, peritoneum, and pericardium are lined by mesothelial cells, which came from the mesothelium, which is derived from the mesoderm. These are mesodermal structures. Look at that. Here is a beautiful respiratory system. Look at this lovely diaphragm. Here is the lung. What's the name of the pleural layer attached to the lung surface? Visceral pleura. How about the other layer of the pleura, which is away from the lung? However, it is attached to the chest wall on the exterior. This is parietal pleura. Viscera means flesh. Your lung is the flesh. Parietal mean related to the wall. What wall? Your chest wall. Between the visceral layer and the parietal layer, we have a very thin layer of fluid, which is serous fluid, which is transcellular, very watery and thin, so that it can lubricate the movement of your lungs and chest wall, so that you decrease friction. But what if I have disease like inflammation of the pleura, say pleurisy, for example? What do you think is going to happen? Well, the membranes are inflamed, friction will go up, and I will hear friction rub. Because for the first time, when these two layers rub against one another, they will make noise and it's gonna hurt. Remember the cardinal signs of acute inflammation, redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. I have a video in my anatomy playlist titled serous membranes or serous cavities. We will review this very quickly. What's the definition? Closed spaces, lined by thin membrane, mesothelial cells derived from the mesoderm, filled with thin film of serous fluid. Why? For lubrication. Just like the synovial fluid of your joints. Embryologically speaking, the serous membranes got invaginated by organs and or tendons. Let me give you an example. Here is my hand, here is my fist, and this is a balloon. As I push through the balloon, the layer of the balloon that is touching and engulfing and surrounding my hand is the visceral layer. But the other one is the parietal layer. This is exactly what happened during embryology to your pleura, to your peritoneum, to my tunica vaginalis, to the tendon synovial sheath, etc., etc., etc. This organ in the middle could be stomach, could be tendon, needs to eat. Yeah. 
let's open a gap in between them, which is the mesentery, to allow blood vessels to supply this stomach, for example. This is the visceral layer around the organ, and this is the parietal layer. Can you give us some examples of serous cavities or serous membrane? Sure. The pleura around your lungs, pericardium around your heart, peritoneum around your abdominal viscera, tunica vaginalis around the testicles, synovial sheaths around the tendons of many muscles, synovial bursa, which we talked about before. Look at that, here is the synovial bursa. A joint is articulation between two bones. Here is a bone, here is a bone. Articular surface, articular surface. Covered by hyaline cartilage, covered by hyaline cartilage. Who's gonna envelope the entire joint? Joint capsule, fibrous connective tissue, tons of collagen. This joint capsule is lined on the inside by a thin synovial membrane, also known as synovium, which secretes synovial fluid, which is similar to serous fluid for what? Lubrication as well. However, the synovial membrane does not line the articular cartilages and it does not line the meniscus or the disc if it happens to exist in that synovial joint. In some cases, an opening will happen, an aperture, and then some of that synovial fluid will escape and leak to the outside. We call this a synovial bursa. Why? For protection, facilitation of movement, and lubrication. Can it get inflamed? Yeah. Just like the pleural inflammation is called pleuritis or pleurisy, Peritoneal is called peritonitis, pericardial is called pericarditis, this is bursitis. Now, friction rub. Inflammation of the pleura is pleuritis or pleurisy. Pericardium is pericarditis, peritoneum is peritonitis. All of them are inflammation, which means redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. We are talking about chest pain, chest pain, or abdominal pain. All of them can give us friction rub. Clinically speaking, it's easily heard for pleurisy and pericarditis. I'm not saying it's impossible to see friction rub in peritonitis. Of course, it can happen with peritonitis. It's just easier to be recognized in cases of pleurisy and pericarditis. But hey, medicosis, both of these organs are in the chest. Both of these patients are complaining of chest pain. How in the name of Zeus's gluteal region would I be able to differentiate between the friction rub of pleurisy and friction rub of pericarditis. I'm glad you asked. First, ask the patient to hold his breath. Okay, all right, breathe in, <gasps> hold it. Oh. The pleurisy friction rub will disappear. You will no longer be able to hear it with your stethoscope because the inflamed pleura stopped moving when the patient held his breath. However, your heart is still beating. Even when you hold your breath, so the friction rub of pericarditis will not disappear. Moreover, if you ask the patient to breathe deeply, the patient of pleurisy will be mad as heck, the pain will get worse, and the friction rub will get louder. But in pericarditis, it does not change that much. However, the pericarditis pain and friction rub will worsen when the patient leans backwards, because when you lean backwards, like lying flat, you are stretching your pericardium, so it's gonna hurt more, and you might even hear increased pericardial friction rub. The third difference is pleuritic friction rub is biphasic. Breathe in, <gasps> rub. Breathe out, <gasps> that's a rub. And since the friction rub sounds like two soles of two old shoes rubbing against one another, you will hear once in inhalation and once in exhalation. <laughs> biphasic. But the pericarditis rub is triphasic, once in systole, second in early diastole, and the third one in late diastole. So it's... <laughs> and after all of this, if you still cannot tell the difference between pleurisy and pericarditis, it's gonna rub me the wrong way. No pun intended. Enough with my dad jokes. Here is a brief differential diagnosis of chest pain. Yes, indeed, pleurisy is there. Pericarditis is there. 
even pneumonia is there. That's why it's very important to differentiate between cardiac chest pain versus non-cardiac chest pain. To learn more about angina and myocardial infarction, TIA and stroke, download my emergency medicine high yields course at medicosisperfectsnalis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense.